We are live. Cool. Hi, right, everyone. Um, please introduce yourself. We will get started shortly. We are just giving everyone a chance to get online. Um, we've got a few notifications that we've sent out. So, yes, we'll be giving it a couple of minutes and then we'll be going live with today's webinar. If this is your first time here, please introduce yourself. Let us know if you've attended a, web a webinar before as well and let us know where you're from. Yeah, absolutely, Davi. As you know, the feeds take a little bit of time to come through to us. There's a slight delay between um, our platform and YouTube. So, guys, um, we will be giving it about 30 seconds to another minute before we go live. In the meantime, please drop your comments in the comment box if you have any questions for us today. Also, if this is the first time on the webinar, please make sure that you subscribe to our channel and... Uh, Click the bell notification on any future webinars that you want to be notified about. We have a couple of webinars scheduled coming up. In the meantime, um, if you can tell us which part of the country you're from, um, let us know if there's any specific issues that you are battling with when it comes to your credit report. And Darwin and I will gladly address these. I uh, can see we've got a bunch of people coming in from Cape Town. We've got people from Durban. Um, so really, really nice to see all the people here. Someone from PE, Port Elizabeth. Uh, welcome, guys. Thank you for joining us on the stream. Um, Darby and I have got some really good content lined up for you today. And uh, as always, our aim is to try and give you as much valuable content in as quick a time period as we can. Yes, yeah, so today's webinar is going to be a little bit shorter than usual because we'll be discussing the debts that affect your credit score. Um, there's not that much to say, but needless to say, there is some things that are very important around debt. And um, we're going to be showing you today what kind of what kind of debt you need to avoid, which debt you could actually take on, and um, which affects your credit score, of course. And that's obviously what you guys want to know. Um, I think I need to, to say this um, before we get started. Every single debt affects your credit score. Maybe a po positive or negative, um, it will still affect your credit score. But we will chat about the positives and the negatives shortly in this webinar. Yeah, Davi, as you can see, I'm having a streaming issue with my camera, so I'm just going to switch over my cam quickly so everyone can see me on my webcam. Um, our okay, streaming okay. camera is having a bit of issues today. Okay. So you're back. Okay, so yeah. let's get started. So there's basically two kinds of debt that you get, right? And it is called installment debt, and it's called, and the other one is revolving debt. So let's talk about installment debt real quickly. What is installment debt? Now, installment debt is debt that you take on that has got a fixed amount that you need to repay, and the, um, the, the monthly payment is also fixed. So something that comes to mind immediately is, is something like a mortgage payment, um, vehicle finance, um, a personal loan. Usually these loans are have a security behind them. For instance, um, a property, um, a vehicle, so it is secured loans as well. Um, vehicle installment debts are also a bit more favorable than um, revolving debt, but we'll ch chat about revolving debt shortly. Um, Justin, is there anything you want to chat about when it comes to installment debt? No, I think, I think you've given a very good summary of it. Yeah, so the next one is revolving debt. Now, this is credit cards, as simple as that. Um, this is seen more as a risky kind of debt. Now, revolving debt means that you're con it's continuously changing. It's always changing. There's no set amount that you are repaying every single month, right? For instance, on your credit card, um, you might be repaying the minimum amount, but um, it could change. For instance, if you've got a 10,000 rand cre credit limit and you have used 8,000 rand, you're paying the minimum, but then you could still take out or use the full credit facility of 10,000 if you want. Now, these, these loans are obviously a little bit more risky and they affect your credit score a lot more than the installment debt, obviously because there's more risk involved to the, uh, to the, or to the credit, according to the credit bureaus. So as we've, as we've discussed, installment debts are more favorable to the credit bureaus than, um, uh, than the revolving debts. Now, when it comes to revolving debt, obviously, this has a very, very big impact on your credit score. Um, when you take out a credit card, immediately your credit score will drop, as with any other debt. 
but over time it will increase provided that you are actually using it responsibly right now let's take a credit card for instance um we've always been saying the second most important thing on your credit score is your utilization ratio now this ties in directly to credit cards because if you use more than 30 percent then it, could, it gets docked on your credit profile if you use more than 50 percent it gets docked again and if you use more than 100 percent you're obviously maximizing your credit limit and you are seen as a massive risk. So this is this, this counts for about 30% of your overall credit, uh, credit score calculation as well. So this date basically, I wouldn't say it counts the most towards your credit profile, but it can be very, very harmful if you don't use your credit responsibly and use your credit facility responsibly. So if you've got any credit cards, make sure you only use 30 percent or less if you use more than that then you need to make a plan either pay off your credit cards or um, pay off some of the balances but get that utilization below 30 percent anything you want to add on the revolving debt there justin no i think i think you hit the nail on the head i think the big thing to understand with any form of revolving debt is that it's it's usually linked to um unsecured loans and so obviously your debt utilization ratio is really important when lenders are looking um at your indebtedness so basically anybody who's looking to give you a loan is going to look at your indebtedness and if you are utilizing more than 30 percent of your facility it is going to negatively impact your score so what davi said is absolutely critical yeah, so that being said, a credit, a credit card could be a great tool to increase your credit score. However, it can also be very, very dangerous and it can very negatively affect your credit score depending on how you use it. So many people yeah. think that um, if they make debt on the credit card, it's going to increase the credit score, where it's quite the obvious. If you use more than 30% of your credit score, credit score utilization ratio, which is more yeah. than 30% of your credit facility of your credit card, yes, then you are going to damage your credit report. But it's one of the easiest fixes, you know. I mean, if you can just sort out that utilization, then almost immediately overnight your credit score will increase again. Yeah, Davi, I think one of the misconceptions at the moment that a lot of people in, in the public domain have is that uh, they believe paying off um, their debt is really going to solve their credit score issue. And as we know, that's not the case. In fact, I'm reading through the comments here and I'm seeing a bunch of comments from people who have previously paid off debt and and basically they're sitting in a situation where their credit score isn't really moving. Um, we'll probably tell people about this a little bit later on in the webinar, but Darby and I have just put together an incredible course, uh, which basically teaches you how to hack your credit score. Um, very specific, exact steps you can take to, to increase your credit score. Um, we'll be talking about, about that a little bit later, but this is a very first for SAFK. It's never been done before. Nobody's ever revealed this information. Um, and because Dave and I come from within the industry, uh, we've spent the last uh, best part of seven, eight years uh, working with credit bureaus and understanding the calculations and the algorithms that basically generate credit scores. Um, we basically, for the first time ever in SAFK, are going to be doing a very limited release um, on information, it's basically a course we've put together that is going to give you the exact actionable steps you can take, no matter what your current situation, to basically increase your score. Um, so, Dov, there are a lot of questions coming through on that, and maybe we'll address those a little bit later on. But obviously, one of the big tips we can give you at this point, really make sure you get your debt utilization ratio within that 30% range, because that's really going to have a big, big impact on your credit score overall. Yes, that's something that also almost no one talks about, you know, when you read about increasing your credit score, you always get the, the same old stuff that is out there on the internet, pay your accounts, um, all those kinds of things, which is pretty much, um, yeah, the pub, the stuff, the information that's in the public domain. But these small little hacks, like for instance, um, using your, your utilization ratio properly, um, it doesn't get talked about. And this is something that we'll be covering the course as well, but we'll, we'll reveal that um, a little bit later in this webinar. Um, I've got two or three more points I want to talk about debt um, because, yeah, obviously there's only that much to say about debt. Um, so let's talk about debt, another kind of debt that I actually think is most harmful to your credit score. And it is called microloans. Now, what is a microloan? A microloan is typically a short-term loan. For instance, um, another name for it is payday loans or just short-term loans in general. For instance, um, Wanga is also a type of uh, microloan. So why is microloans so damaging towards your credit score? Well, think about it, it's actually pretty logical, right? If someone goes and search for a microloan, that means that he's in immediate danger actually, or in immediately distressed um, in terms of his personal finance. 
So that obviously raises a red flag to the credit bureaus, and thus you are seen as a high risk. Um, that's because if you take a micro loan and something else goes wrong, then you're most probably going to default on that. Now, something very important or a fun fact about micro loans: if you've only got micro loans on your credit profile and no other kinds of debt, then your credit score is going to be zero. So try, try and avoid micro loans altogether. Um, if you've got if you've got uh, problems repaying your accounts, simply phone up your creditors. It's a lot, lot easier than taking a micro loan. If you take a micro loan, I promise you, your credit score will drop and it will be docked on your credit score so or on your credit profile. So it's going to take a while to get that removed or get that negative flag really removed from your credit score and get your credit score up again. So stay away from micro loans. Yeah, Davi, I think something that's important to mention about the microloan space. I mean, micro microloans has has almost become a pretty much of a formal sector within South Africa because you know, unlike what most people think about South Africa, um, we actually have a very strong financial industry. We've we've got a very heavily regulated banking and lending industry, um, and microloans really came into play because loan sharks were literally operating without any scrutiny without any oversight and essentially the 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 the, the natural transgression was for people to go from loan sharks to micro loans and micro loans basically filled that gap and and payday loans is also quite a recent thing in south africa but essentially what micro loans and payday loans is it's it's a very high interest attracting loan so obviously you're going to be paying way more than you would normally through whether it be a personal a personal loan uh, whether it be an overdraft whether it be a credit card you're probably going to pay way way more sometimes two three times more than you would in in the traditional loan space having said that though, i think people really need to understand that micro loans essentially took over from the loan sharks and it really is it, it really became an area that became slightly more governed and slight, slightly subject to a bit more legalization. But for all intents and purposes, this is no different than going to a loan shark. You're basically going to get fleeced. Micro, -lo micro loans are probably the number one reason people are indebted and can't get out of debt. Um, there's just no ways that people can successfully service these loans at such a high interest rate. The problem is for a lot of people taking out micro loans, it, it usually comes from one or two places, right? It's usually people who've coming from the informal sector. And so obviously they, they are higher risk and nobody else will lend them money. So usually they go into the micro loan space. Well, alternatively, what it is, it's consumers that are really heavily over indebted and actually cannot go out and extend um, various means of finance, whether it be through an overdraft or, you know, get an additional limit on a credit card. And so the reason why microloans has, has, has such a detrimental effect on people's credit scores is that when lenders look at your profile and they see that you have one or two or three, and in many cases, people have multiple microloans, um, it obviously is a very clear indication that this person is either coming from the informal sector or alternatively, they are highly indebted. So, Absolutely a great tip, Davi, for these people that are with microloans. Pay off your microloans quickly, as soon as possible. Settle them and never go back to them. Rather look towards your banks and look towards um, traditional entities to try and get loans if you absolutely need them. But obviously, we advocate first and foremost that people shouldn't have debt, period. Yes, which brings me to my, to my second point is avoid personal loans as well. Now, personal loans aren't as harmful, I would say, as a micro loan, but it's still not a great thing to have on your profile. You know, um, like I said, with micro loans, if you take out a personal loan, it also means that you're bordering financial difficulties. And obviously, the credit bureaus aren't stupid; they know that. So that you're obviously going to get penalised when you take out a personal loan. Um, it doesn't matter what kind of debt you take; if you take a home loan, vehicle finance, personal loan, it doesn't matter what it is. But any account that you actually open. It's going to drop your score with 10 points and the reason for that is the credit credit bureau sees you taking on new risk right which is new finance and now you have to prove yourself to these bureaus that you can actually repay this debt now as you go along maybe home loans maybe vehicle finance or personal loans after six months or so your credit score will start increasing again and um, that 10 points or seven points or whatever it might be where it dropped initially will start increasing again as you approve yourself but obviously a personal loan um, if you've taken a personal loan and you have one or two setbacks, then it can be very negative towards your towards your score. So that's why we always activate uh, or advocate that um, you don't take on any debt such as personal loans or micro loans. Obviously, home loans, homes are expensive, so we can understand that uh, some people 
uh, or most people need to take out a home loan because it's just unaffordable for, for the general public. Same with some vehicles as well. But then obviously, if you take a home loan, make sure that it's less than 20% of your, of your payments, 20 to 30%. Um, the same with vehicle finance. It needs to be in relation to your current income that you are getting. So the takeaway is use credit responsibly. Don't take out any loans or short-term loans in order to increase your credit score because it's not going to increase your credit score. And it's, you're probably, most probably going to be paying a fortune on interest anyway which is going to be bad for the end of, for, for you as a consumer. Yeah, Darby, I think uh, something that we need to add here, and I think and I think this is really important for the South African consumer to understand and appreciate, and in fact, this is valid for anybody around the world. Um, per personal loans, really, if, you, if you're starting to rely on personal loans, chances are you've got a problem on either, A, you're spending too much money or you're not earning enough. Now, mm. you know, it's simple mathematics here. If, if you're not earning enough, you have to reduce your spending. It's as simple as that. So, you know, when people say, well, I can't avoid personal loans, I can't avoid my micro loans, you know, the end of the year is coming up, we've got to do Christmas, or we've got kids' birthdays, school fees, January is always a terrible time for people. People really need to start accepting that financial responsibility starts and ends with them, right? So, look, the banks aren't, the banks aren't going to do you any favors. The financial institutions aren't going to do you any favors. You absolutely need to start becoming responsible about your money. You have to spend less than you earn. If you spend less than you earn, chances are you will still have to probably have a home loan at some point. You might have to have vehicle finance, but you should probably be avoiding personal loans, right? And 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 certainly credit cards, which I know you're going to talk about in a second, Davi. Credit cards is another big area of concern. And I think the problem is we have an emerging middle class in South Africa that really doesn't understand finance. Although finance is now available to them based on the fact that they're earning money and they've got a certain amount of income, that doesn't take care of the back end stuff like budgeting and, you know, basically making sure you have breathing room in the amount of money you earn and your expenses so that you're setting money aside for rainy days. And so, you know, the problem is once people start going to personal loans, it really becomes a hole that you can't get out of. But having said that, if you do have personal loans and you are in that situation, I mean, it's great for us to stand up here and just say, listen, avoid micro loans, avoid personal loans. But the practical, the practicality of it is, Davi, that most people on this, on this webinar probably do have some kind of debt. They probably do have some personal loans. They probably do have some micro loans. They probably do have some credit card debts. And probably the best tip that Davi and I can give you right now, if that is your current situation, really, A, start reducing your living expenses. We know it's uncomfortable. We know it's not the nicest thing to have to do, but you have to face reality. You know, it's 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 like they used to say to us at boarding school, Davi, they used to say, pull up your big boy panties because, you know, reality is in front of you now. There's no, there's no way of running away from it. If you've created a problem, if you've got into, into debt, if you, if you have a problem, number one, reduce your living expenses. Number two, and this is really the critical thing, start servicing more than the monthly minimum required. So if you have a payment on a personal loan that's a thousand rand a month, if you can only afford an extra hundred bucks a month, start putting that extra hundred rand a month in because that is not only good for your for your actual loan that you're servicing, and it's going to reduce the total amount you pay over time. But also what it does, it, it demonstrates you're a responsible borrower. And this is essentially what lenders want to see. They want to see borrowers who are responsible, people who pay on time and don't just service a monthly minimum, actually make an attempt to pay a little bit more. So even if it is just 10% more than your monthly amount, stop living in this mindset of servicing minimum monthly payments. Start trying to maximize how much you can pay every month. And that will not only help you pay off the debt sooner, but it will also obviously positively impact the way lenders see your profile. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's like that. Like we said in that webinar we did a little while ago, um, when it comes to the home loans, um, home loan tips that we gave people. If you only pay 10% every single month towards your, uh, towards your home loan, which really isn't very difficult, right? then you'll be cutting down a 20-year term home loan down to 16 years, which means that you're saving an absolute fortune. You're saving four years of your life paying that bond. Well, Davi, I have to disagree with you for a second there. I mean, to, to guys like ourselves who constantly watching our credit profiles, who constantly monitoring you know, our, our credit records, who constantly budgeting and doing this sort of thing, it really isn't that hard. But you have to also appreciate and accept there are consumers out there that are heavily indebted. And look, people are using coronavirus as a very convenient excuse. You know, the reality of the situation is if we confront 
the truth here. People should have had three to six months salary saved up, right? And the only way you have three to six months salary saved up in an emergency fund is if you're actually spending less than you earn. So most people are living on their threshold. And, you know, it's easy to say, I can't do this and I can't do that. And, you know, I, I accept it's difficult for people. I understand for some people just finding an extra 100 random months to put towards something is really difficult. But here's the thing. It may be difficult. It may be challenging. But if you don't do it now, if you don't start servicing your debt now properly, you're going to be in a world of trouble down the line. And Davi, as you and I know, it is extremely difficult to rehabilitate somebody who's who's got a really weak profile. I mean, there are things that you can do to improve, but you must understand it's a quick way down and a long way up, right? Yes. No, exactly. Credit scores, um, it's an ongoing process for the most part, and it's mostly a reflection of how you how you handle your money and your personal finances. The problem is I, I, I accept that there's, um, for a lot of people, it's almost impossible to, to service their debt repayments um, by the situation that I'm in. But the problem is, the, situ the problem is not going to go away, though. It's still there. It's still a reality that you need to face, um, if, even if it means going on debt counseling or whatever it might be. But the problem is not going to go away. If you don't yep. start working on that problem and start solving that problem, like you said, it's only going to get worse down the line for people. Yeah, look, Davi, I mean, people are looking for external factors to solve their problems, you know, and the external factors usually I need to earn more money. Well, I'm here to tell people that that's not the solution. The solution is you have to work with what you have, not with what you don't have. So start by reducing your monthly expenses. If that, if that means changing your habits to get there, if that means going without, the only way you're going to rehabilitate yourself financially and get your score correct is really if you take the steps that we're talking about and really focus on reducing expenditure so that you have excess money available, you know. And I think and I think the big lesson here, Dov, is that people need to start treating their personal lives like a business. I mean, you can't run a business without cash, right? You can't run your life without cash. But for some reason, there's people earning 50, 60, 70,000 rand a month, and they spend 50, 60, 70,000 rand a month. I mean, that's a big problem. You're just never, ever going to get ahead. And the problem is, as people earn more, generally their lifestyles increase with that earning parity. So, you know, that, that, therein lies the problem. The If, if I could go back to, to myself in my 20s, or I could give a 20-year-old some real sound financial advice, I would say live on as little as possible for as long as possible and save up money. That way you'll actually never need to leverage debt. But the reality is we're sitting here with a bunch of adults in, in a middle-class society that's developing in South Africa who really are so leveraged, they have so much debt that when one thing comes along like the coronavirus, it just throws off the whole equation. So, you know, I know it's tough advice. I know it's tough love, but people need to hear this. You need to spend less than you earn. You need to service your debt, and you need to not only service your debt on time, but you need to meet more than the minimum required. That is the only way you're going to demonstrate that you are a responsible borrower, and it is one of the main things you're going to do to basically increase your score and ultimately make yourself financially appealing and investable person that lenders want to basically lend money out to. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. You said you, you hit the nail on the head there. I think one more thing to mention about personal loans. Um, there's a lot of bad advice on the internet. Um, so a lot of people obviously saw the, it's, it's public knowledge now, and I mean, we said that if you sort out your credit utilization, then your credit score will go up immediately, right? So there are people at all, and a lot of websites that um, actually tells people to go take a personal loan and then consolidate their credit cards with the personal loan. I think it's terrible advice because you're just taking one loan to pay off another. Whereas you said, rightfully so, rather than cut your living expenses, it's a lot easier. I think that's the I think that's the biggest tip you can actually give people. The easiest way to make money is to cut your living expenses because immediately you have money available to you. No, Davi, the way I always say it to my family is uh, we have to work with what we have, not with what we don't have. The problem is most people are borrowing money against future earnings, right? And there's no guarantee, even if you're in a job. I mean, we, we, we see people being retrenched every single day. Um, there is no guarantee of future income. So the best thing you can do is work with what you have, not with what you don't have. Don't leverage yourself to a point of fault. Davi, I've got a quick question for you. And I'm sure, I'm sure probably somebody would want to ask this here, but this is a really good question, I think. Would you recommend somebody takes a personal loan if they really need to or an overdraft? Which one is better? A personal loan or an overdraft? Yeah. 
Well, I think the overdraft is easier to get than the personal loan. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think it's a really difficult question. And actually a question that was posed in a forum that we were that we spent some time uh, on the weekend discussing in. And people are saying, you know, should should they go for a personal loan? Should they should they go for an overdraft? Davi, I think I think it's it's a pretty hard thing to answer. I think, you know, people need to look at their banking relationship. How good is their banking relationship? Chances are probably somebody who's got a good banking relationship will probably get a better deal um, in, in terms of in terms of accessing finance through an overdraft. Um, however, depending on the amount of money needed, you know, maybe the choice only choice they would have is to go through a personal loan. But what I would suggest is that people need to really start looking at the interest amounts payable. Look how those are, look at how those amounts are accrued. So, for example, um, certain personal loans they get charged interest weekly. Maybe the interest is added monthly. Maybe it's added, you know, bi-monthly. Maybe it's added every quarter. Really look at the conditions because it's not just the interest rate. It is how often that interest rate is basically topped up on. And really that's what we call the compounding effect of debt. And what you want to avoid is not only a high interest rate, but you want to avoid having the interest incur on top of interest uh, too many times. I mean, obviously the, the best one would be to obviously have it re, uh, incurring monthly. Um, but there are certainly personal loans that are incurring more than that. So that would be my suggestion. Yes, look, I think if you, it, it, since you put me on the spot, I think I'd, I'd take the overdraft because in most cases from what I've seen from people is if they've got a good banking relationship, like you just said, I mean, I know someone that has an overdraft and they basically run their business through it, but um, which I don't agree, but they get prime minus one. So I yeah. know for a fact you're not going to get prime minus one on a personal loan. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Then lastly, obviously, we have discussed this already. It's use your credit cards responsibly. Look, it's very easy to get a credit credit card, and it's very easy to um, spend on that credit card. Um, it's simple, simply a matter of swiping. We, we had a conversation the other day with a guy, and uh, we were asking him about his expenses, and he just said, well, it's so easy. With a credit card, you just swipe. So yeah. <laughs> actually, now with corona, it's so easy, you just tap it. You don't even have to swipe it. In most cases, you don't even have to enter the pin anymore. So it's very, very easy to lose track of what you're spending on your credit card. So, like I said in the beginning of this webinar, a credit card is a great tool to increase your credit score, but only in the hands of responsible people, um, not in the hands of someone who doesn't have a, um, who can't manage his finances properly, because it's only going to cause a lot more harm than good. If, if you fall behind on credit, credit card payments, it causes a lot of harm to your credit score. However, if you use 30% or less of a utilization ratio, it could be a great tool to increase your credit score. Yeah, Davi, I, th I think the other thing I just want to add about credit cards, I mean, if, if you have to ask me what is probably the most evil thing ever created in personal finance, it's probably a credit card. And, and, and we've discussed this many times in Global Money Academy, uh, where we're basically mentoring people around personal finance and basically taking them by the hand on their wealth journey. Um, we, we've, we've been talking about why credit cards fundamentally have such a negative impact on people's personal finances. And I think this is something I just want to put out to, to, to everybody watching this webinar today. The thing is about credit cards, and it's a very strange thing about human psychology. If you have a positive balance, you tend to spend less. It's really, it's really a strange thing, this, um, because you're actually seeing the money come out of your account. The problem is the moment the balances go negative, people actually tend to spend more um, because suddenly they, they actually feel like they're using the bank's money. And so, you know, there's there's a whole scientific study behind it and there's and there's, a, there's some very strong psychological triggers and facts we can we can certainly touch on and talk about in another webinar. But what people don't realize is, you know, going into the negative actually makes them spend more because they feel like they're not spending their own money. And so that's probably one of the biggest problems with credit cards. And so if you are highly leveraged with credit card debts at the moment, I mean, obviously, we'd, we'd, we'd advise pay off your highest uh, bearing in interest accounts first. So make sure microloans are paid off um, and then probably credit cards would be second. Um, but the big problem with credit cards is really that it is what we've spoken about very much a revolving facility. So, you know, you, you can pay off the, the minimum balance and then you can probably spend a little bit more than the minimum balance next month. And so what happens? Of what you paid and so what you have is you have this compounding effect of debt and that is a very real problem um in fact when i lived in the us of it was it was pretty common 
uh, for people to have five or six or seven credit cards. I mean, that's just absolutely insane. And the scary part is I see South Africa going the, the same way. I mean, almost everyone that I know in middle class society now has more than one credit card, either one or more credit cards. And that is a serious problem. It is, it is literally enslaving us financially. You know, when I see the news and the media talking about uh, economic enslavement and, and I, I see the media talking about, you know, how we basically need to redress the issues of the past and basically rehabilitate people and give them an opportunity to get into the economy, I actually have to chuckle a little bit because nobody's talking about the thing that's keeping our, our middle class society back, and that is credit cards. That shit is evil, and people have to try by all means and get rid of it. In fact, Davi, you know my theory on this. Unless you've got a million rand in the bank, you actually shouldn't own a credit card because, you know, we've got people running around there who've got less than zero in the bank, and they're still being issued credit cards. It is 100% economic enslavement. No, I couldn't agree more with you. Yeah, so Davi, I don't know if you've got any more questions uh, or topics you want to go over, but we've got a we've got a lot of comments coming in from people that I'd like to start addressing. Um, and we've only yeah. got about fifteen minutes left, so if if you're done, I'd like to bring some of those questions up on the screen. One hundred percent, we can start bringing them up. All right, cool. So I'm just going to scroll up to the top here because we've got some really really good um, questions coming through. Um, right, so I just want to quickly bring them up. Da, da, da. Right. So um, Zolani asked, I have a judgment on my credit record. Uh, subsequently fully paid up. Um, uh, obviously, uh, he's got a letter from the attorney and the creditor. What's the next step for removing the judgment? Um, Davi? Yes. So that paid up letter you now need to take to the courts where the judgment was um, first obtained. And then um, you will need to provide the courts with that um, paid up letter. We need to schedule a new hearing and only then can you get the, the judgment removed. Yeah. And in the meantime, also what I would do or suggest of is if you are a mycreditstatus.co.za subscriber, uh, what, I, what I would suggest is that um, you use our dispute uh, generator. As soon as you have got confirmation that the judgment is cleared off your name, use that dispute generator and basically provide all the proof, provide the paid up letters, provide proof of the removal of judgment and send it through the mycreditstatus.co.za system. It will then go to all the bureaus and those bureaus basically have 30 days within which to remove it uh, from your record. So as long as you can prove unequivocally that the, that the judgment has been cleared, that it's been dropped, um, then you should basically have that removed from your profile. And it's very easy to do um, if you're my credit status today subscriber. Davi, I don't think we've told people this before, but the cost of a subscription with us is like 99 bucks, you know, 99 Rand a month. And not only are you getting a host of tools along with your credit report, we're also giving you some really good educational stuff on your on your credit profile. And um, Davi, I know you've worked over the last two, three years consistently on building up a video library of content, really teaching people how to manage their money and also how to manage a credit score. So that's really, really good tip from, from me, Zolani. If you're not a, if you're not a paid up subscriber yet, um, I highly suggest you go to microstatus.co today and get yourself a, a monthly subscription. It's, it's worth a hundred times what you're going to pay every month. Yes, exactly. I think one thing I could add there is, um, Obviously, you're going to be wondering where the judgment was um, first obtained by the credit by courts. You will see that on the credit report as well. So, yes, I definitely, I highly recommend that you get um, get a subscription to my credit status. Also, um, you get access directly to Justin and I because we've got a, a private Facebook group only for our subscription members. And yeah. on this group, you can ask any question you'd like whenever you want, and it actually gets um, answered personally by, by Justin and I. 100%. So, Sia Bolela is asking, I was under debt review and cancelled because it was not prioritizing my debts and now I decided to pay direct, which I'm struggling to get settlements uh, from the creditors. What would your advice be in this situation, Davi? Okay, so the problem is that debt review flag is not going to go away. You can cancel your debt review if you want, but the flag is going to stay there until you settle all the debts that was listed on, um, on the debt counseling agreement. So, yeah. yes. You need to you need to finish that debt review, um, the, the settlements of that debt review. Um, and our, in our course, we actually the new course credit report hacks that we are that we are launching pretty soon 
um, we actually show you exactly how to negotiate with creditors, um, how to how to basically do the debt counseling process yourself. So yes, it'll be great tips, um, something that no one else discusses, and it's going to be part of the course that we're bringing out. Oh, all right, so on to the next one, um, Ravi. This is uh, from uh, Zulani Howard. It was posted to the magistrate court. Can I resolve this directly with the credit bureau? Not if it's a judgment. Um, you'll have to go, you have to follow the legal route. Um, I would highly, highly suggest you rather go to an attorney. Um, it's got to be a lot easier. Um, obviously, you'll need to have some kind of legal background or legal assistance when you're approaching the courts. So I would rather pay an attorney to, to, do, that my, or to do that for me. Okay. Next question. I had a bad credit record, but rectified this last year, and my credit score does not go up, though. I'm up to date with everything, um, and my affordability is good, but I get rejected through my or even though my scoring is good. What 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 are some of your inputs there, Dolly? Yes, yeah, so single Billy, there's a lot of factors that in, that um, that obviously affect your credit score. I would um, the fact that you said you rectified it last year it means that you probably closed your accounts which is actually um, not the best thing to do. It doesn't increase your credit score when you close your accounts. It's quite the opposite. The, the credit bureaus wants to see that you've got a history of repaying your accounts. So the accounts on your profile is not the only factor. Um, there's a lot of things involved in increasing your credit score. And it's actually pretty simple once you understand it. Um, there's a lot of information needs to be discussed, and obviously I can't go over all of that. But um, Yes, that's once again, um, we, we are bringing out a great course where you can um, do this yourself, um, where we're going to be explaining you in very layman's terms how to increase your credit score, um, the, 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 the way you should, and also there was, there's also a few quick tips that you can implement to increase your score quickly. So like I said, it's an ongoing process, um, and it's obviously based on um, good financial habits, but there are definitely a few small things that you can do to increase your score very quickly. Yeah, Davi, I think the thing we have to hit then, I've actually dropped the link in the comments box. If you guys want to sign up for the early notice list for uh, the credit report hacks course, um, it will be in the description in the comments. So you can just go and click on that and go and register as soon as you get a chance. We are only allowing 500 people to join the course, I must tell everyone. The reason for this is the information that Davi and I are giving out really is like, behind the scenes stuff that nobody else is talking about. And so what we really want to do is we want to, re we want to retain the integrity of the information. And obviously the more people get it, the less effective it's going to be. So we want to make very sure that we only get this in the hands of 500 people initially. And uh, I promise you, if you get your hands on this course, it's going to be a major, major eye opener for you just to see the little things, the little details that you're missing that are right there in front of you. And Darwin and I, having done this for the last seven to eight years, we have a foolproof method for hacking your credit report and basically making sure you increase your score. Um, Darwin, just moving on to the next question quickly. Um, I had an arrangement with a creditor for six months settlement, but they're still taking money from my bank account. So if you can quickly give um, Medusa a quick idea on sort of what he can do. Okay, um, so what you need to do is I hope you have proof because if you've got proof, then the situation is pretty easy, right? If you've got proof um, that the, or your communication with your creditor that it's only um, for six months, then I would take that proof, um, that communication with the creditor, I would dispute it. Um, obviously, you can use something like my credit status where you can simply click the button, dispute that account, and then send the letter with your proof off to the credit bureaus and dispute that because the creditor is basically breaking his words. And if you, if you did what the creditor um, asked you to do and arranged with you, and, um, you know, then they shouldn't be doing that. I mean, it's unethical. So, yes, that's what I would do. And um, I would also tell the creditor that it's, um, that it's illegal. I would take the proof to them and tell them, listen, yeah, this is not what we agreed on. And I would even go as far as to go, go to the credit ombud if it doesn't get resolved. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, Davi. A good, a good thing would be go to the credit ombud and also go to the national credit regulator and lay a formal complaint against the company if you're unable to resolve it directly. All right, um, Davi, the next question is, what is an ITC clearance and would you recommend it? Um, ITC clearance, I would suppose you're talking about the clearance certificate that you get when you finish debt counselling. Um, so ITC is just another name for um, TransUnion. So when TransUnion was basically one of the first credit bureaus in South Africa, it was called TransUnion ITC. 
So there's still a lot of people that talks about um, ITC listings or ITC um, default. It basically just means ITC was just um, TransUnion's name. But a clearance certificate is what you get when you um, settle your creditors under the debt counseling process that you've um, entered into. Um, you take that clearance certificate, you send it off to the credit bureaus, and then they will remove the flag. Dobby, is credit. there a fee for, for a clearance certificate? A fee for a clearance certificate? Yeah. No, there shouldn't be any fee. It should be um, built, or it should, should be worked into your agreement with your debt counselor. Perfect. All right. The next uh, next question. How long does it take for the history of a microloan to be removed from a person's profile? Well, microloans can stay in your accounts, I think, for up to two years. But um, obviously, if you pay it and you did, um, if you didn't, didn't miss any payments, then um, it, yeah, it's after about two months or so, it won't affect your score at all. So um, that's why we suggest if you take a microloan, if you have microloans, pay them off as quickly as possible, but never, ever, ever miss any payments on them. And again, another great tip we can give is if you are microcreditstatus.ca subscriber, if you go a year in and that thing is still on your profile, and even though it shows as paid off and you, and you want it removed, all you have to do is do a dispute. Uh, basically, um, you can generate it through through our platform, microcreditstatus.ca today. Use the dispute generator, send off all the information that's paid up, and ask for it specifically to be removed from your profile. Um, right, next, uh, next question or comment, Davi, is coming from Colin, and he's asking, what about personal loans to consolidate all your debts? Therefore, settle all debts and replace uh, with one loan repayment. Can I actually handle this, Davi? Yeah, I, I've, I've got a reading. You've got a lot to say about that. <laughs> yeah, look, um, Davi, I'm, I'm pretty scared of consolidation. Um, consolidation actually has got a very nasty history in South Africa. Um, debt consolidation companies came about probably in the in the mid-2000s, two, two, like, you know, around 2004, 2005, we started to see consolidation really making an impact in the South African market. And, you know, first of all, I just want to say, Colin, you have to use some logic. Um, if you have got a high number of really high interest bearing uh, loans or facilities, and you can get a personal loan that really is going to reduce the interest that you're paying, then absolutely I would consider it again. Just have a look at the compounding effect. Have a look at how frequently interest is charged to the account. Have a look at any costs and administration fees that may be levied by the company providing the personal loan. And then what I would suggest is it really comes down to having a look at, A, can you pay off these facilities possibly without taking a personal loan? So let's say, for example, you've got a micro loan. Uh, and a credit card. Possibly, maybe you can pay off the micro loan, and maybe you use a personal loan to to pay off the credit card and basically kill the credit card forever. You know, cut it up, get rid of it, never go back to it, and then consolidate into a personal loan. I just want to really caution you, Colin, in terms of in terms of consolidating consolidating your your let your debts. The problem is most people look at it as in terms of the monthly payment that they're going to make. So they're saying, okay, on four or five things, I've got X amount that I'm paying every month. If I consolidate into a single loan amount, um, I'm paying less every month. And whilst that may help you in the short term, long term, you really need to look at how the interest compounds on your personal loan in relation to whatever other debt you have. So I would say, yes, consolidation is certainly an option. I would definitely consider it but only if it is going to reduce the total interest payable across the various uh, facilities and loans that you have. Okay, so um, the next question or comments is asking, my credit score is 601, which by the way is not too bad, and I don't know why because I have no judgments on my name and I'm only having one account and it's very new, so it's not even a month old, but my score is poor. Davi, this is really a great, great one to, to dive into, but obviously we've got a lot of questions to get to, so if you can just sum it up as quickly as possible for us. Yes, so uh, I will tell you, if you had a judgment, it would be a lot less than 601. <laughs> 601 isn't too bad, like Justin said, but it also isn't great. So yeah. the, the, I'll tell you the reason why your score um, isn't increasing, because you've got a count that's only one year or one month old. Um, you you got to only be seeing an increase after on that account after about six months or so. Um, there's other factors involved as well, increasing your credit score, but referring to your specific situation of what you told me just now, yeah. yes, that's the one. Absolutely. All right. And then, Davi, this comes from Nick, and he's asking thoughts on using your full access 
uh, to a credit card to purchase an income generating property. So the purchasing fees are not attributed to the 20 year bond. I think you can take that one. I, I know you want to. <laughs> yeah, look, um, you know, again, I think it's a calculation, uh, Nick, that you have to do in terms of total interest payable. Um, whilst I appreciate that you may be able to um, shorten the period, you have to look at the amount of interest that you're going to be paying. You also have to look at the fees that you'll be paying. Um, also, what I would also suggest, um, Nick, is if you can settle a bond fairly quickly, which presumably you're going to do if you're going to be using a credit card, um, then what I would suggest is is possibly still take the bond facility because, you know, having a bond facility, I mean, you can have an access bond, pay that bond up, you know, and maybe just keep a thousand rand or whatever open on the bond and still have access to that facility, which, by the way, is also really good for your credit score. If you've got, if you've got something that's, that's paid up, you're not utilizing the entire facility, you're demonstrating your responsible borrower. Um, but certainly I would be very, very cautious of uh, purchasing on credit cards. Um, I don't think most people realize how quickly interest compounds on a credit card. In addition to which, um, in, terms of, in terms of a bond, um, there are some additional things that are going to give you advantages in having a bond, like I mentioned, the access bond facility. So, yeah, I, pr I probably wouldn't go the route of a credit card. Okay, so we don't have another, a lot of time left. Um, let's take another one or two questions. All right, so this, uh, this uh, question comes from uh, Samanza asking, what is the duration of removing bad debt history now that we also went through the COVID pandemic. D Davi, before you answer, listen guys, COVID, COVID is gonna, the, the COVID excuse is gonna give you very little relief. Um, so, you know, I also wanna address something. I've seen somebody asking about payment holidays. Guys, please, you need to understand, payment holidays doesn't mean that you don't owe the money. Payment holidays means that you're gonna start paying at some point. And when you do start paying, you have to catch up on the payments that you didn't make. Um, so, you know, I'm just, I just want people to really appreciate and understand that COVID is no excuse. Um, I know it's tough. I know it's, it's been a rough couple of months, but we have to accept we're probably in the situation because we failed to set money aside in the years gone by. So, you know, let's not use that as an excuse. Let's face reality here. Um, in terms of the duration for removing a bad credit history, uh, you must appreciate that it takes time to override your bad your bad history. So, you know, there's probably going to be 12 to 14 months of bad history on your account, and it's going to take you at least half of that to start overriding the patterns on your profile. Would you agree with that, Davi? 100%. Well, I've got a one-sentence answer to this um, question. <laughs> as soon yeah. as you sort out the default account, you can sort out your bad uh, payment history. The longer you're going to wait, the longer it's going to stay there. Absolutely. All right. Um, guys, please help. Uh, so a couple of years ago, I was going through some financial constraints and I could not afford to pay my creditors. So I opted for a debt counselor with debt busters. And uh, there's now a, there's a follow up to that question. Uh, let me see. There we go. Been listed as a default when you're under debt review or is it because they were not paying? but debiting my account every month. Please assist. Yeah, Davi, this is a difficult one, eh? This is a very difficult one because that depends on um, your agreement with, with Deadbusters. Um, it's not really something that we can comment on because we don't have enough um, information. I would go to Deadbusters if I were you, and I would try and resolve the, um, the situation as amicably as possible. Yeah. All right. So I see, Nick, you said that you paid off your, uh, you took a bond repayment during COVID. Uh, took a payment holiday and you've used that money to put towards your credit card. Really, really solid advice uh, that we can hand to people is if you do have payment holidays and you've got extra cash available, do what Nick has done. Be like Nick, pay your debt, pay your credit cards where you can. Obviously, your bond is a lower interest rate than credit cards, so absolutely service your credit cards first. Um, just want to see if there's anything else here that we can um, quickly address. We've got about a minute or two left, Davi. So let's do one last question. Guys, I'm very sorry if we didn't get to every single person's question. We really tried. However, if you're my credit status today subscriber, you can join Davi and I in the Facebook uh, Insider group where you basically get direct access to Davi and I as well as all of our staff. 
and they'll be able to assist you. So really, if you do have questions that we're not getting to, please make sure you subscribe. Please make sure you get into the forums and start chatting to us. Last question we'll take here quickly, um, Davi. Uh, this is from uh, Washi, Washi, Washila. I hope I, I pronounced it correctly. Um, we can now switch our bond after sending the clearing certificate a week late. The flag was removed. Davi, do you have any comments on that? Yes, I suppose that is actually posted as a question. Can we now switch our bond? So um, yeah. let me take some, make something very clear to you. Once you get your debt review flag removed from your credit score, you're basically starting off on a new slate. So you're basically entering the world or the credit world as a newbie again. So it's going to take quite a lot of time for you to start building up a credit score and a, a, a positive credit profile again, um, especially for bonds. Um, with bonds, you need to have a pretty high the credit score to be um, to, to qualify for a bond, so um, I think it's very it's going to be very unlikely for you to be able to switch your bond um, at this stage. You will need to build up a solid credit profile again, and it's, um, unfortunately that takes a bit of time, especially if you just came out of debt counselling. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Look, I think and, and uh, she just responded saying spot on. So I think you got that that uh, the summation or that uh, spot on, Darby. Um, yeah, look, guys, unfortunately, we, we have a time restraint today. We are running at 51 minutes, so we're already five minutes over. Um, we want to thank everybody for joining us on the webinar. If you guys do have questions, we didn't manage to get to them. Please, please, please join MyCreditStatus.co today. It's like 99 bucks a month to join. Um, you'll get your credit report every month. You'll get a library of tools where you can basically go in and start doing calculations, setting up budgets. Um, and also really get some really strong financial um, education. Davi's done an extremely good job uh, with updating our library with really some valuable, valuable content and resources. Also, um, Davi and I spoke earlier about uh, the credit report hacking course that we are releasing. We are releasing it on the 29th of October. Am I right, Davi? Friday the 29th of October? Correct. And um, basically, what we're going to be doing is we're going to we're going to be teaching people the the hacks that you can implement immediately uh, to go and improve your your credit score. I'm going to quickly put the link on screen. We have got an early registration list. If you're interested in it, you can go to this link, um, and you can basically then go join the link, uh, set up your name and email address on our system, and we will notify when you when we do go live on. Uh, on, on the end of the month. Um, just to let you guys know though, and this is obviously something I have to stress, Darby and I have had some huge arguments about this behind the scenes. Um, we are only going to be releasing 500 of these courses. The reason for that is the stuff that Darby and I are teaching in these courses is it hasn't ever been seen in the South African marketplace before. We are also bringing this information based on the fact that we've been working behind the scenes, really seeing consumers' data, figuring out how the algorithms and systems work to basically calculate scores. And so for this information to be effective, we definitely can't give it out to everybody. We're going to only give it to 500 people. So make sure you get yourself on the list. Make sure you sign up. Darvin and I will be making an announcement on that list um, on the 29th. We'll be opening up at 8 a.m. There will only be 500 courses available. As soon as those 500 courses are gone, that's it. We're closing the doors and we won't be giving that information out again. So we absolutely, absolutely encourage you. If you want to get a perfect score, and we mean perfect, like in the 700s, then what you want to do is go to the link on your screen. It's globalmoneyacademy.com. You'll see from the T-shirt I'm wearing, Global Money Academy. It's another um, entity that Darvin and I are involved in, basically bringing financial literacy to the South African marketplace. And we've decided to put this course together. Darvi and I, like I say, we've been spending long nights on this. This has been months of work in the making. And this is going to be absolutely life-changing for the people who get it. Um, in fact, the amount of money that you're going to land up paying for it will be repaid almost instantly. Probably your savings on insurance premiums alone will pay for the course. Um, so, you know, make sure you make sure you get on the list and make sure that uh, on the 29th of October at 8 a.m. you are sitting and you're ready to get this course. First come, first serve, guys. And uh, yeah, from my side, Davi, that's pretty much all. And we'll um, we'll catch up with everybody in two weeks time. Yes, um, we'll be posting the replays um, shortly as well. So if you got cut off or if you joined late, then we will be sending out the replays where you can um, look back at the webinar and um, 
get up to date with everything we, we, we discussed. So we'll see you guys again in two weeks from now. So it seems, Hamagashi, Saragashi, see you soon. Ciao.